For this video, we're going to focus on everything you need to know about developing your reading responses. When we are talking about reading responses, we're talking about peaching paragraphs where you've got a point and that is usually the question that you've rephrased. You've got your evidence, which is a quote from the text. And then you pick up the most marks for the explanation. So what can you tell us about the quote? And you clearly explain why the quote that you've picked links to the point that you initially made. In all of our English classrooms, we have this colourful display. You do not need to use every single one of the strategies that I'm about to go through now. What you do need to do though, is if you are feeling stuck or need help and guidance on how to develop your reading response, after you've put in the this suggests, you can use the strategies listed here to help further develop your response. The first strategy that I'm going to discuss is the top one, which is comment on the writer's use of structure. One way you can do this is by commenting on the writer's varied sentence lengths. So what that means is you look at a text and you identify if there's a list or if there's a complex sentence used See if there's a shorter sentence, like a minor sentence, a one word sentence after it, and then consider why is that important? What is the effect of that? What is the writer trying to make the reader feel? To attain higher marks, think about what was happening at the beginning of a text. How does that change in the middle? Or does it not change, is it the same? And then how is that at the end? Is there a juxtaposition, which means an opposite? Is there a contrast to what was happening at the beginning? Or does the writer use cyclical structure? And does it, in fact, the end, link right back to the beginning? The second strategy is perhaps one of the easiest ones to use. Um, it's when you focus on a keyword within the quote that you've picked. So if we take the example here, Angrily, he swung the bat as hard as he could. The key word that I would focus on would be the adverb, angrily, because that tells us that he was furious when he was playing the game. I've just given you an example of the next strategy, which is to add subject terminology. So in my previous response, I said that it was an adverb. So think about what language or structure device that you could include to make sure you reference the subject terminology. That could be metaphor, simile, adjective. It could be juxtaposition, alliteration. It could be parallel syntax and so on. The next strategy is definitely one to use when you are struggling to come up with a way to develop your reading response because this is something that an examiner cannot argue with because it is commenting on the effect on the audience or the reader, which is yourself. So you would start your sentence by saying the effect on the reader is they feel, and then you would put in your answer. So that could be shocked, scared, sympathy or pathos, excited, tense, etc. For this strategy, all you need to do is think about why did the writer portray the characters or the theme or the plot in a particular way? So this would read, for example, like, so I'm going to give you two examples now. The first one, the top one, Shakespeare's intentions were to prevent people from plotting regicide by. So that shows Shakespeare's reasons for presenting Macbeth in the way that he does. For the second example there, I've said Dickens' intentions were to make the wealthy take responsibility for the poor. This, this next strategy links to the one above and it's make a link to context. Context is anything that um, links to societal attitudes, their beliefs, their ideals um, within a set time period and important historical events that could have influenced a writer. So keeping with the same previous example, I've then added on, Shakespeare's intentions were to prevent people from plotting regicide because of the gunpowder plot which threatened James I in 1605. So there is the additional historical context that examiners need to see that you know. So again, using the Dickens example, I've said Dickens' intentions were to make the wealthy take responsibility for the poor 
who were treated like criminals due to the Pua Law Act of 1834. This helps to develop reading responses because it proves to the examiner that pupils are aware of the important societal beliefs of a historical event that helped shape their writing. Make a link to another quote is self-explanatory. It's where within your writing, you've made a point, you've used a quote, you've explained it, but now you really want to prove to the examiner that what you've said is accurate. So you find another quote that's similar, that means the same thing to support the point you've made. I've saved the last strategy until the end, because this is the one that pupils need to master if they are aiming for the higher grades. So this is where you consider an alternative meaning which proves to the examiner that you understand that one quotation can have more than one interpretation and it also demonstrates that you are tentative, that you are careful within your analysis. So your sentence could start with, alternatively, this perhaps suggests that and then at the very end of that you would fill it in with a different interpretation of what else your quote could suggest. Finally, we would just like to say thank you for listening to this clip on how to develop your reading responses. Next time that you are asked to write a P-chain, please make sure you look at the display and incorporate some of the strategies to help develop your response.